Hello, I'm Josh, and this is Save the Track Bike. Thank you so much for tuning in. On today's episode, I have Heather McKinnon. Uh, she rides for All City Cycles. She's an alley cat racer, an artist. Uh, she raced Red Hook. She does track. She's starting a new track team. And yeah, we talk about all those things, and we just basically nerd out about bikes. This one's very conversational, so I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I hope you do too. Let's get into it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name's Heather. I'm 30 years old, and I live in Seattle, Washington. I'm uh, currently a bike messenger. Um, I also race bikes, I guess, and I have a track bike. Nice. <laughs> um, how did you get into cycling? <laughs> I got into riding bikes, I guess. Not even track bikes, but I got into riding bikes um, for commuting in Boston. And so um, I couldn't really afford a car. Uh, bikes were cheaper. Uh, it was a little bit more, more reasonable. And I liked just, I guess, just being outside, a little bit more connected with the outside world. Uh, so I got I got my first bike. It was a, it's a Univega conversion. I got it for like 200 bucks at this place called Bikes Not Bombs. Um, just one gear, brakes. Uh, it was pretty simple. And I rode that around for a couple of years. Yeah, what attracted you to getting a single speed? Um, I think, I mean, just getting into bikes, I didn't really know a whole lot about gears <laughs> or, yeah. uh, what a derailleur was. I definitely learned that later on, but, um, just to keep it simple and just to keep me rolling as, as, you know, soon as I could, I could just hop on a single speed and, uh, just kind of pedal, just kind of go with it. So I think that's what it was. Yeah, for sure. I think I, I kind of came from the same view because i grew up on bikes but it was always on bmx bikes and so like oh okay yeah but like a road bike was you know nothing that i really experienced and so when i moved to the city and i wanted to get on a bike as well which i think was probably we're very close in age so i think it was mm -hmm. right around the same time we were probably both getting into bikes <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, well, yeah, I had a bike when I was a kid, and I don't think it was a BMX. You know what? I think it was just like a Huffy. Yeah. Um, and then throughout high school, I didn't touch bikes at all until about, yeah, I think it was 2005 I got my first bike. Nice. As an adult, as an adult, yeah. Yeah, I think it was like uh, 2005, 2006 for me as well. Yeah. But how did that uh, single speed become track bikes? Oh, become the track bike. Yeah, what did that like um, look like for you? Uh, you know, okay, so my Univega was my first bike, and I used it to get around. I went to college in Boston. I, I ended up moving to Boston, so it was my commuter uh, working in Boston and things like that. And um, I don't think I can place it, but I do have this vivid memory of, like, I think I was hanging out at actually another bike shop, and I saw somebody ride by on what I – what I'm pretty sure was a track bike. Um, and I can, I can picture the bike in my mind. I don't know the brand or even the person who was riding it, but I remember, you know, it didn't have brakes and there weren't any wires or cabling, uh, no derailleur, of course, and things like that. And I looked at my bike and I was like, wait, how do I have this bike? How do I turn that into that bike? That, that bike just looks so, it looks simple. It looks sleek. And, uh, I think that's what just drew me to the track bike, uh, quite honestly, is that it was just so simple. I literally think I saw like somebody's in my head. I remember it being like this NJS, like steel bike, but who knows? It could have been like some shitty, like <laughs> conversion yeah. bike or something. But, uh, I just remember seeing this bike and being like, oh man, that's beautiful. What is that yeah, thing? Yeah. And then for some reason, all my friends right around that time, you know, 2005, 2006, 2007 in that area, like I was in my 20s and everybody was getting like track bikes at that time. And 
like yeah. Mash was coming out and Macaframa and like my friends were becoming messengers and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, ex- exactly. Because I kind of the same thing with me too, where like I ended up moving to California and meeting all these folks that also rode bikes because I didn't have any friends out there. I just moved to San Francisco on a whim and I, I met all these people and I was just like, oh, hey, they're riding bikes. Um, uh, I also ride a bike. Maybe we have other things in common. Um, and they were mostly bike messengers. So yeah, same thing where it was like, uh, ended up uh, hanging out with the bike messengers and get, getting more, I think, uh, involved or no, no, no. The word I think is like exposed to uh, other sort of bikes, track bikes and bike messenger world and stuff like that. Cause I think a lot of my friends got obsessed with like bike polo and stuff around that time too. So it was just like <laughs> a lot of stuff oh, yeah. going on. <laughs> um, bike polo is surprisingly fun. And I mean, so God, I've been riding a, a bicycle, I guess since 2005. So that's <laughs> over 10 years, but I just got into bike polo last year when I moved to Seattle. Yeah. And it's, it's surprisingly fun. <laughs> You know, that's kind of like me with, uh, like, I've been riding track bikes for a, over, like a decade now as well. And, like, uh, for some reason, I'm just now getting into crits and stuff. So that's kind of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm, like, oh, in my yeah. 30s, I'm, like, maybe too old to be starting, but fuck it. I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> oh, you are? Yeah. What crit are you interested in doing? Or have you done one already? I did one crit last year. So there was, like, a big cycling festival that was part of like a pro tour like the tour of colorado or whatever Mm -hmm. and they had this like festival where like death cab for cutie played and tennis and like all this stuff and then they had uh crits all day as well so it was like this insane like bicycles took over denver for like this like uh, a weekend this summer and they had a fixed gear category so that was my first race last summer Cause I needed some motivation to keep exercising. Cause I like quit riding my bike for a long time. Cause I owned a business uh-huh. and yeah, and I just got distracted and just basically stopped riding my bike and got really unhealthy and really unhappy. Yeah. And then finally, like last year, I just started riding my bike again. I, I kind of discovered the whole crit scene. Yeah, yeah. Cause like it's uh, it's it's crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Those crits, man. Yeah, I didn't. I think I did my first one in, fuck, what year was it? Uh, 2015? No, 2014. It was the Red Hook crit in Brooklyn. Yeah. And, oh my God, those were terrifying. Because I had, like just got it into racing. And, you know, this was after a couple of years of me riding a Univega around and then eventually getting an IRO track bike, which I, was, you I know, I had one of those steel. too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, they're... I, that's actually my polo bike right now. <laughs> nice. But um, I sold oh, mine I, to my like, friend, but he then it was too small for him, so he sold it. And yeah, dude, sad. tried and true. Those are those are some solid frames. I mean, this was back when they were making pretty, I think, in my opinion, solid frames like KHS, IRO, uh, Fuji. Actually, was putting out a pretty decent track frame, steel ja- uh, track frame. Mm-hmm. But uh, oh, I love my IRO. Um, I think. Wait, did I race? Oh my god! I think I raced the Red Hook crit on that IRO. Oh, oh no. my god! Why did I do that? Yeah, I think <laughs> that bottom bracket. Like, if you had the one I had, I think the bottom bracket would be too low for that. <laughs> It'd be scary. Uh, yeah, pr- probably. I think I had the Mark. It's the Mark V. I think. But uh, but the next year, I got an aluminum. I got the All City Thunderdome, which was a uh, uh, world of a difference. Yeah, <laughs> but that, uh, that's a magical and beautiful bike. Oh yeah, it's you know without a doubt my favorite bike I've had. Um, and you know, side comment. That's why I was really excited to talk to you about track bikes is because I just love this frame. I don't know. Um, I have <laughs> I have too many bikes right now, too many to count. But that one is without a doubt my favorite, the Thunderdome. Nice. Yeah, I love that bike. I I was gonna buy one recently. But I got a really good deal on a on a bomb track needle, and so I think I'm gonna get that instead. But nice, yeah, do it. <laughs> I know. I love that Thunderdome though. My so what was so was the IRO your first track bike then? I guess technically track bike, yeah. It would have it would have been the IRO. I think I had a like a Univega, like I said. Yeah. I had, I had a oh I had a 
You know what? I had a Bianchi. Oh, nice. Um, what was their track frame? Like the Pista, the steel one? Yeah, I had the green Pista back in like 2007. Yeah, those I are totally cool. forgot about that till just now. <laughs> oh, I know. Um, yeah, I forget I, about I some I of the s- bikes that I had. Like, I kind of yeah. forgot about the IRO for a long time. And then I was talking to somebody and was like, oh, yeah, I used to have one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, the IRO has been with me for almost 10. I mean, when did I get it? Uh, right after the Bianchi. So, yeah, almost 10 years now. Uh, but, um, yeah, so the Bianchi, the IRO, and then I <laughs> I guess I upgraded to the Thunderdome. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, my first really good bike was actually the first generation like big block. Oh nice. Yeah, the, those are solid frames too. Yeah, like the maroon one with like the white fork and like yeah. I I had that for a, like a decade until I sold it like last year cuz I wanted to buy a road bike and then I immediately missed uh-huh. riding fixed gear, so I got another big block <laughs> and sold that road bike. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good for you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, stick stick to what you know. Yeah, totally. Oh my god, yeah. I actually just got my first road bike, like a, a bike with gears. Um, <laughs> I got it. What is it? Three years ago now. I got um, uh, the All City Space Horse. That was my first bike with gears. Man, uh, for almost ten years, and I I'm still I'm terrible. You should hear my boyfriend. I'm so bad with shifting. Or if something goes wrong with my <laughs> derailleur, I'd just rather be on a track bike. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, I have no idea what is going on. Here you <laughs> yeah. Go. Yeah, I basically, like, I do have a road bike now. Again, just like, you know, all of us bike people are insane. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I have a bomb track uh tempest which is like a steel road bike as well and like yeah i don't mess with it though like i'll ride it and i use it for training because i wanted to go on group rides to get more used to like riding in packs for the crit stuff Uh uh-huh and uh but yeah if anything goes wrong with it i'm the same way i'm like i don't know do something (laughs) with this i mean i'll take my whole track bike apart i don't care (laughs) yeah yeah i know right but anyway, so how did uh, All City come about, f- like being one of their riders and all that stuff? Um, I, dude, I don't even know. Still, it's um, it's kind of like a. This sounds really cheesy, but like a dream come true. Yeah. Because I've so I've always had the Thunderdome. Um, I bought that one outright, so it was before I was uh, sponsored on the team, and so I, you know, and it, and it was, and it still is my favorite bike. So. Um, so I definitely talked about it, you know, to my friends or, um, you know, posted about it on social media and yada, yada. Um, and so then, you know, I started racing more alley cats on it and I ended up, uh, I don't even know how, but I won, uh, the West side invite in San Diego. This was 2016, two years ago, I think. Um, so I won that and I was with a couple of buddies of mine and they were like, Hey, you should, uh, you should be on the team with us. And I was like, you know, I was like freaking out. And so, uh, and so I got in touch with all city and they were also super excited to have me on board. And it kind of just happened from there. That's awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So how did you get into racing? Like your first alley cats and stuff? Oh my God. My first alley cat. What was it? Um, <laughs> so uh, my first, what I want to say bike race, I, it's not, I don't think it was really an alley cat. I guess it kind of is, but um, the Wolfpack hustle had a thing down in LA a couple years ago or a few years ago. And it was called crash the marathon race. Um, I think, Oh, my friend Veronica won it that year. So it was like a, you know, they raced at night into the morning right before the L.A. Marathon in the streets of L.A., you know, so you'd follow the course of the the marathon through L.A., through Hollywood and I think uh, Santa Monica. Um, And so it was like a group ride slash race. Like there was like, like, oh, my God, there's like 2000 people that were in this like group ride. And then you'd have... (laughs) 
you there was a lot of people <laughs> yeah but and then you'd have you know like your pack of like 50 people that were racing and racing um so i i was just doing it with my friends like as a group ride um but my first alley cat i guess was cranksgiving in new york when i lived there i i decided to do that with a couple of friends of mine because you know it's for a good cause um, and I ended up winning Well, Dominican Chris won as well with me that year. And again, that's, that wasn't really like an alley cat, alley cat. Well, I guess, it, I mean, it is, but, um, you know, it's a food drive alley cat. So you go around each checkpoint and you have to buy food, uh, or certain things that the manifest requires and then, um, uh, bring it to the finish. Uh, so there was, you know, again, you have like a hundred people that are doing this alley cat and then you have the the chunk top that are actually racing for all the prizes and things like that. So I was like, yeah, sure. I'll just, fuck it. Like I'll, I'll do this cool event and then I'll just try to ride as fast as I can and see how I do. (laughs) Yeah. So, so I won. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was cool. I guess I didn't really, I didn't really grasp, uh, what it meant, I guess I was, you know, I, or maybe I was still in disbelief, but when they called my name for, uh, for first female, um, I don't know. Yeah, I was a little beside myself. I was like, cool. So like, this is like the the buzz. Like this is, you know, okay, so now I'm figuring this out. If I take this track bike and I just try to ride as fast as I can uh, safely or maybe not safely <laughs> um, within a city and just do the best that I can, uh, maybe that's just enough. And that's just, that's just the fun of it. Uh, so then after that, I just got hooked and I started racing more. <laughs> yeah. So I'm actually looking at your all city page right now. So, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> your, your little, like, I still have to, your race I have resume to write that here. Bio. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's up there. So um, you've done a ton of stuff, which is cool. What are I, some I of the highlights? So. What are some of like the best race stories that you have or some of the most satisfying things that you've done? Oh my God. Um, <laughs> I think I'm just going to say like my favorite or maybe one of the highlights was Westside Invite in San Diego. And I got to race uh, with a good friend of mine, Joe Celso. She's from San Diego and her and I drove down there. We made a trip out of it. Uh, We got to race together and she's so much faster than me. So I was, you know, just hanging on by a thread, you know, like, (laughs) as long as I can just hold on to her wheel. Um, But, you know, her and I really complimented each other during that race, which was a lot of fun uh, because she challenged me in the way of speed and my strength, but um, she had never, I I think that was her first alley cat actually. So like she didn't really understand or she didn't know, sorry, she didn't have the experience in racing in the street. And so, uh, so that was kind of fun because I got to show her like, Hey, we're going to take this left like that or, watch your red lights when you go through them. Cause you're going to, you know, things like that with, uh, alley cats, get us compliment each other a lot. So I think that's why that, that race was one of my favorites because of those reasons, I think. Uh, and it was, it was so hard. That race was so hard. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. How did that all transfer into I, becoming like track racing and, and trying red hook and all that stuff? Um, the, the track racing came from just being a bike messenger, I think. Um, cause I kind of, I don't know if this is like right or not, but I told myself, I'm like, okay, well I'm out there on my bike doing work. And so I'm already doing the miles and, you know, even though it's not the best miles for your legs when it comes to training, <laughs> <laughs> um, I told myself, well, you know, if I'm putting in this amount of work on my bike already, why don't I try to translate that to on the track or on the velodrome? Uh, and so I did. And I, I sucked at it for a really long time. <laughs> uh, I got dropped or I got lapped. Uh, track racing was very difficult at the beginning. But then once I realized how ridiculously hard it is, it became this challenge that, that was really exciting for me. Um, cause I kind of noticed that any challenge I put in front of myself, um, it, it like reverberated on my personal life as well. Like, you know, if I can train and put this goal in my head and actually work towards it 
you know, even though I'm getting lapped, <laughs> um, eventually, you know, I started getting closer to closer to those goals, you know, which is like not getting lapped. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I got to see, it was really exciting to see that reflect on my personal life. Uh, so I got to, I got to translate that, like that, um, in a way of reaching your goal. And I got to put that into other things that I was doing of like, actually kind of like my artwork. So, uh, so yeah, so there's still track racing and it's still really hard. <laughs> yeah. It, so does Seattle have a velodrome? Yeah, we do. Nice. Yeah. So I'm, I'm so excited. Um, so our velodrome here, it's, uh, Mary Moore. I think that, yeah, it's the Jerry Baker velodrome. I only went, I think twice last season. And so that's why I'm really excited for this season again. It starts in April. Um, I want to put more time in over there and, uh, and be on the track more, uh, than last year. But, um, yeah, it's only like 20 minutes away from here. Yeah. I'm, I'm lucky in Colorado too, because we have two out here. So one's like oh you have two yeah one's like not in denver specifically but one's in boulder which is like 40 minutes away and then the other one is in colorado springs which is like an hour away so it's not that bad oh okay yeah you guys have an olympic uh an olympic velodrome too i think is it the indoor one yep there's a the indoor one in colorado springs is like part of the olympic stuff yeah that's really cool the one in uh boulder though is like it's insane that's like one of those just huge bank like super fast wooden velodromes oh wow yeah yeah minneapolis has one like that too yeah so the guy that used Um, to run the minneapolis program runs the one in boulder now oh no shit Yeah, yeah yeah that's cool i forgot his name though i need to get out there i only went uh once last season and I didn't race at all. I just went to the class and yeah, I kind of want to get into racing this summer. So yeah, check it out. Um, I mean, it's also a really good workout. I think that's what was really fun with track racing is that I got to, I got to open my perspective a little bit on track racing and talk to other people that were out there, you know, and and there were a lot of people that would just go out to the velodrome to train for their road race or that was their workout instead of going to the gym was track racing. It wasn't all about, you know, like sweet, fixy, cool points or anything yeah. like that. So <laughs> um, so if you feel like you have other uh, aspirations with track racing other than, you know, wanting to win, you know, just get out there and start riding around uh at least you'll be moving your legs and getting in a workout and getting exercise. And then you'll be surprised to see that, you know, you can take yourself to new strengths and, uh, you know, things like that. It's fun. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, just the one time I was on it, I was surprised by how much different it felt. It's almost like the Mm -hmm. difference of like road, like riding a road bike up a mountain or like riding a track bike in the streets to running like it was that different, but you're still on the track. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's what, uh, I, I think that's what like, uh, cured my curiosity with velodrome racing is because I had seen it from this one perspective, you know, from never racing it before and just seeing it, you know, on TV for the Olympics or hearing my friends talk about it. And I, you know, I was like, Oh, it's this thing, you know, you have to go really fast and then just turn left. Uh, but once you get on the track and you start riding around and racing, yeah, it is totally different. And that's the exciting part about it. It's yeah. What are some of your favorite track events? Like as far as like the races go track events, like on the velodrome. Yeah. Uh, Oh, like, uh, like the races that they do. Yeah. Like the different kind of races. <laughs> oh my God. I love, I love this question. Cause I already know the answer. My favorites are missing outs. Nice. And actually, it's the San Jose Velodrome that I raced at for a couple of years, uh, they were legal. So it was only when we had certain, uh, um, like uh, when they had a non, I don't know how to describe it. But um, if it was like an event that was happening at the Velodrome that wasn't the typical Wednesday night, like if it was like a, 
uh, like a one Saturday a month event that was hosted by someone else, then we could do a missing out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> God, they're so much fun and they are very dangerous. So yeah. I don't, I don't blame them for being legal at, at certain velodromes and things like that. Yeah. One of the races I'm definitely going to do this summer is the Red Bull last stand, which is basically like that idea, but in crit form. <laughs> yeah oh my god i've oh oh my god i remember when red bull announced that a couple years ago and it was like this new thing and i i actually haven't really been following along with it too much but once i read the rules and you know started started seeing what people were talking about that race looks like a lot of fun i would love to go yeah for sure you should (laughs) (laughs) i I think yeah uh, a do they do it pe- every year now? Uh, I think so. I mean, a lot of people, okay. a lot of people turned out last year from what I was seeing. Uh, mm-hmm. I didn't end up going, but I definitely want to do that this summer. That's like my one for sure race. Like outside yeah, well, okay. of Denver, that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me know how it is. Maybe I'll try to go out next year when I'm not so broke. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. I feel you. Yeah. That's like my big thing is like, <laughs> I just got like. <laughs> a new bike and I've been spending money on this podcast and stuff. And then now I'm like, I have no idea what races I can make it to. So we'll see. Yeah, no. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. No, that race looks like a lot of fun. And then, you know, the red hooks are, the red hooks are getting big now and it's getting really exciting. And, uh, I think we're seeing a lot of, uh, like really skilled athletes are coming out to those races now. I mean, I didn't, I didn't do the Red Hooks that long ago, but it, it just seems smaller. Um, I remember the, the first year that I did it was the first year they had the women's field and uh, Joe Celso won. So that was really exciting. And then it's, it's been so cool to watch the race kind of grow from there now. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, they got like and giant it, yeah. sponsors and like they have yeah. all these like uci like track people and road racers like coming in and like just i think this next year is going to be insane because like state bicycles like they have a crazy team going i just talked to like their team manager for the podcast and like Uh uh, their women's team is going to be like super strong and uh and i know that specialized rocket espresso is like bringing on some more uci like road racers to like <laughs> wow yeah so it's it's crazy ah uh, man now i want to go <laughs> right i uh i've been i've been teetering and uh just uh going back and forth on whether or not i'd go this year cuz i haven't i haven't raced red hook since t- uh 3 years ago now um and i miss it yeah. They're so, they're so they're so hard and they're so exciting. Um, we'll see if I can make it this year. Now I want to go. Now that you said that, <laughs> yeah. So what was your Red Hook experience like when you went? Oh, it's scary. It's so scary, but that's what makes it fun. Um, I I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, my race, unfortunately. Uh, got cut short because I got a flat. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the last one that I did, they so you know how they have the runners that do the is it the five k I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had the runners race before the cyclist race, and uh, a big issue what was happening was the runners have their numbers pinned to their jerseys or 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 t-shirts with the safety pins oh yeah and so the safety pins were falling off the runners actually i think it was ash ash got second that year and same exact thing happened to her where she ran over a safety pin or not a safety pin um yeah safety pin uh but she had tubulars so she was able to finish the race of course and i i had tubes (laughs) so uh i got a flat and i didn't have a wheel and so but it was still fun yeah, that sucks though. Mechanicals are the worst. <laughs> yeah, because you're just yeah, like I, I was feeling it, and then like you can't do anything. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a buzzkill. <laughs> yeah, especially in like a that, crit because it's not like a road race that lasts all day or something. Like you're yeah, like what well, if you get a flat, you're done. Like that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you drop yeah. a chain, you're done. Like, <laughs> yeah, but that's what makes those fixie crits so much fun. Oh, is totally. that. It, because something like that can happen to you and you can't like, I just couldn't do anything but laugh. It was just so fun. It was just so humbling. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? To just be like, you know, you're out there, people are cheering your name and you've got this, you know, you're like, I got this. And then, you know, life comes in and, and completely humbles you and you just, you can't, you know, that's what I think is exciting. And I think that's, uh, that could be why the sport is growing so much is cause like, you know, you watch like a tour de France or something and like, you know, it's like all day and it's boring most of the time. And then you basically just watch it for like the sprint at the end. And then, <laughs> and then like you go to a criterium, whether it's a road or track or whatever, but then you like, yeah, then you add it on to being like a fixed gear criterium where anyone can enter. And then it yeah. just becomes this like whole crazy thing where it's like the great leveler almost. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And it's like so spectator friendly, which is nice. And then, yeah, it's exciting though cuz you can have like the number one guy or girl or whatever non-binary person whoever is racing like get crashed out and then all of a sudden like you have this completely new person that's about to like be number one in the standings who nobody has ever heard of or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's unpredictable and that's what makes it fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's rad. I love it. Yeah. I think that's why I got so obsessed with it is just cuz like it's yeah i don't know it's like i don't know i guess growing up with like bmx and stuff it's kind of like that but just a little bit longer and more endurance rather than just like a you know two minute sprint or whatever (laughs) yeah yeah and bigger wheels and bigger frames (laughs) yeah exactly and you can sit on the saddle which is nice (laughs) oh yeah that's nice (laughs) i think that's like how i thought about it when i got my first track bike i was like oh it's like a bmx bike but i can sit well, you can sit down. <laughs> yeah, and I can go faster. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what's your setup right now as far as your track bike? I know you got the Thunderdome. Which one do you have? What color? <laughs> so I have the Thunderdome from 2015. Uh, so it's the black one. Oh, I want uh, that so bad. So now, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't think they have the black ones anymore. He's just doing the, the like, the baby blue teal yeah yeah um which is beautiful as well which is yeah a little fun fact that's uh that's actually the color of the prototype that they did and um christina peck who lives in san francisco she uh well ex bike messenger now she has that proto and so they adapted that color now in uh production so it's, it's cool to see that color out there now and it's really pretty it's really pretty yeah so i have i have the black one and I, I don't even know how I've managed to have this frame for this amount of time and it doesn't have any stickers on it. <laughs> it's kind of sc- scratched up a little bit, but it's, it hasn't, you know, it's just, it's hasn't given me any issues. It's just uh, been the bike that I needed to be. Um, I have, uh, what do I have? Oh, the Durace wheels are on there. They're laced to H plus suns. They're a couple of years older now. Nice. Um, and then I, so I race uh, 49, 15 on the track, but at this velodrome, uh, the regulations are you have to be at 48, 15. So I think it's currently at 48, 15 right now. I'm sure there's someone out there that's going to know the name of this bar tape, but I love it. Uh, and it's got the different color Chanel logos on them. I'm probably not describing it very well. I'm looking at it, but I can't describe it. That's okay. <laughs> but... The Chanel bar tape is, uh, it's always been super comfortable. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. I haven't like fallen in love with the bar tape yet, so maybe I should try that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the, f- I have the physic or physique or however you say it ones right now. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. And I like Physiques them, but they wear out real fast. Like they're, yeah, they're yeah. done. I've only had them for like maybe like five months and they're just like already like fraying and stuff. <laughs> Which is fine. Oh really? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no, but they make some. They make some good stuff too. So. Yeah, I don't like the leathery ones though because my hands get all slippery. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. What cranks are you running on that? Just curious. Oh, uh, that's right. I forgot about that part. Um, the Omnium. <laughs> I have the yeah the Omniums. Uh, they're silver. Nice. And and I, uh, I think it's got. It has my time attack pedals on there because I'll use that for riding in the street. But when I'm on the track, I have road pedals. Uh, I think I forgot the road pedals that I have on there. 
Um, but yeah, the Omnium cranks have been great. They they are a little bit heavier than most other cranks, but yeah. they've never given me any issues, and I've had these ones forever. I think my next track bike will be that Mint Thunderdome with like I yeah. want to get like the Durace like just beautiful cranks on there and then just have like all chrome components except for the wheels but we'll see <laughs> Ooh, that sounds pretty yeah yeah i think i'm pretty sure i saw somebody racing the red bull last stand with almost that exact setup but that's uh-huh. fine i'll copy them i don't care <laughs> <laughs> they, they'll never know i won't tell them no they won't know <laughs> but i have h plus sun rims too and i love them i think they're yeah, they're great. Um, I have the, you know, teeny 23s on there. The tires are pretty small. So with the H plus sun, because they're a little bit wider, mm-hmm. um, sometimes it's hard to get that tire over, um, you know, when you're uh, putting the tire on there. But other than that, the, they're great. They corner really well. Yeah, that's what I love about them. I just like, I was running like the stock wheels that my current track bike has on there. And like mm-hmm. cornering was always fine but a little sketchier than my all city because my big block i have 28s on there so i mean yeah (laughs) uh and then when i got the new wheels and they were so much wider i was running the same tires but the cornering is just magical yeah it's it's almost like it you know the wheels kind of like turn into the turn like when you have you know other whatever other wheels that you have or rims that you have it's it almost feels like when you're taking that turn, you're getting pulled back the opposite way. Yeah. You're kind of getting bounced back, but I don't, or maybe it's just the rims that I've noticed or I've ridden on, but these ones, they just, they curve right into it. They hug those turns. So, yeah. wow, that's really nerdy. <laughs> no, hey, that's what this podcast is. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> no, but, but, uh, yeah. yeah, I love it because like on the on the like hairpins or whatever, like when I'm practicing and parking yeah. lots or whatever, I just like, don't get worried at all, which is nice. Oh, I used to, I did that too. Good for you. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, bef- yeah. Before I went to Red Hook two years or three years ago, whenever it was, I would just, I lived in Oakland. So I would practice in this parking garage that was across the street from my house, Nice. <laughs> <laughs> which sounds so silly looking back on it, but it kind of, I mean, I don't know if it helped or not. Um, but it is really good practice if you just, yeah, you, I would like take those turns. Because mm-hmm. um, you know what I was trying to do? I don't know if you were doing this in your parking lot with uh, practicing hairpins, but I was trying to get as close as I could without pedal striking. Yes. I kind of wanted to see like where I, yeah, how far can I push it to before I get before I pedal strike. Yeah, I was, I was checking yeah. that and just like my grip of my tires. So those oh, were yeah. like the two yeah. things. I was just like. Okay, I'm either going to yeah. slide out or pedal strike unless I, like, get the hang of this. So, uh, I live, like, pretty close to our, like, pro football team stadium here. So, I was just riding out there and, like, just going into the parking lot and just going really fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just, yeah, but now they actually have crit practice. Uh, there's a group of, like, fixed gear riders here in Denver, uh, and they have, like, a crit practice in that parking lot every Thursday. So... I need to get out there so I can get used to riding with people more because I got dropped pretty immediately in my crit because I think I was like scared to keep up. <laughs> uh-huh. It is bit. scary. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I got to get the hang of like being in a pack. So no, that, uh, that fixie practice, you know, if you get a couple of buddies with you together and you actually do drills that are relevant to fixie crits, I think it helps. And, um, uh, a couple of folks and I, or not actually, well, I was kind of just there, but um, they started fixie practice in Oakland a couple years ago too. So that was really new and exciting. Um, and I went out to a couple of them. I think, I think they still have them. Uh, they would go around the port of Oakland on Sunday mornings and, you know, you meet at bicycle coffee and get a coffee, uh, you know, with everyone before you head out. But um, yeah, I'm glad that they, you know, that stuff helps actually you know, to, to get comfortable with pack racing or turning, um, and things like that. Yeah. So you kind of mentioned that you're starting a track team, uh, or that you and some other people are forming a track team or something. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? 
Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so it's <laughs> it's called Trackamania, nice. and um, it's going to be uh, just a fun team. You know, um, the Velodrome is actually uh, they're interested in sponsoring our team, which is going to be really fun. And they approached actually my boyfriend. They approached him, and they were like, "Hey, uh, you're a bike messenger. I see that you're involved in events." Uh, we as the Velodrome, we want to start like a bike messenger team that comes out here to race that's a little bit more uh, uh, chill, a little bit more friendly and definitely more fun. And so, you know, Fred and I were like, well, yeah, let's let's do it. So there's a couple bike messengers. There's a couple that aren't bike messengers that are going to be on the team, but we're just going to create a fun team um, to just get together and race out there because... Uh, I think it makes it a little bit more comfortable and friendly to be racing with your friends or to be racing with people that are like-minded. And so, yeah, it's going to be Trackamania, which is <laughs> a play on uh, Hulkamania because, uh, for no real reason at all other than to just have fun. And um, I guess Hulk Hogan is already wearing spandex too, so... <laughs> 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 well there you go and maybe it'll give all city motivation since they like name everything after wrestlers <laughs> right right yeah <laughs> jeff's already on board already it's gonna be great <laughs> good that's good to hear yeah because it um, seems yeah. like that seems really cool like that all city does that like uh one of the things that really made me finally get out to the track was that coachella video that all city put out oh my god that's such a great video yeah i know exactly what you're talking about I know. I was like, I want to see a whole feature film about this because, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! All the videos that All City puts out are just so hilarious and funny. I love them. Yeah, the Electric <laughs> Queen video, not track the bike related, Queen. but so good. <laughs> not track bike related, but if if anyone wants a good laugh and uh, to be entertained, just go on the All City website <laughs> and watch their videos. They're just such a fun group of people. That's God. I'm just so lucky to be. Uh, uh, included with that group of people, they're so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I've always been a fan of of just that company in general. Uh, I mean, like I said, I had the first generation big block. Like my old dream bike was like when they used to do the. Uh, I mean, I'll probably get one one day, but they used to do like the Airwolf and stuff, like the Fixie Freestyle bikes. And I see them on Craigslist every now and then, and I'm like. I should buy that, but I haven't yet. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I didn't even know about this. The Airwolf? Yeah, I think that's what it was called. Uh, yeah, they had that, and then they had the Dropout. So they were like... Yep, um, yep. Yeah, so those were like their two fixed gear freestyle bikes back in the day, and I always like really wanted to get one. But for whatever reason, I got the Me. big block, and whatever. I loved it. I had it for 10 years, so. <laughs> oh, no shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, my buddy here in Seattle still has a dropout. He's still got it. That's awesome. Somebody was yeah. selling one in Omaha, and my wife is from there, and I was just like, if they're still selling that when we're out there, I might just, like, try to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. For the memories. <laughs> yeah, you know, because I never got one, so. Yeah. You know, now that no, I. cool. Now that I have, like, a kind of a real job ish like and i can kind of afford i can't really afford another bike but kind of can maybe <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the first stage of a bike problem right there <laughs> yep 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 i know i'm like when is this podcast going to get to the point where i could like partner with somebody and just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's funny I, I i did that like all last year i'm like i can I kind of have enough to build a bike. Let's just start it out and see what happens. Yeah, because you just you built know. up that. Uh, um, why am I forgetting the name of it right now? Your bike, Cosmic Stallion. Yes, the Cosmic Stallion. Yes. Oh my god, that bike made me fall in love with bikes all over again. If the Thunderdome didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, oh my god, that bike is amazing. I just yeah, I'm broke now because I just I because I had to do it justice and I put a lot of parts on it that I think. Uh, is what the bike deserves. Um, what do I have on there? Well, I got 105 uh, group set, 105 group set, and then I went with Industry Nine wheels, uh, laced to um, WTBs. Or is it WTBs? 
yeah, the industry nine hubs uh, were not cheap, but it was so worth it for that frame. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful bike. Um, and that little oh, like video clip it. that they put out, like when that came out, I was like, fuck, I got to get that bike. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I will get one at some point, but I can't right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bike problem. <laughs> I know, for real, I really do. Yeah. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, I know. <laughs> So yeah, the track team. So what is what is the plan for the team over the over the summer? Do you know? Like what's, oh, what's um, it looking like? Twenty eighteen seasons creeping up real quick. <laughs> I know it's starting pretty soon. Um, we've got our kits that are getting a panned out right now. Um, we got a wheel sponsor. We're gonna try to throw um, a fundraiser pretty soon. We're gonna try to do gold sprints. Another buddy on the team. He's going to be throwing an alley cat, which is really exciting. Um, and then, yeah, the season starts uh, sooner. It starts really soon, actually. I think it's uh, the first week of April. But, you know, our season is really long up here at this velodrome. It goes until mid-October. Um, and I think it's because it is so rainy up here that uh, there, there are times or most days that you can't race on that velodrome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the track team's going to be really exciting. I can't wait. I, I mean, I'm not sure. I've never started a team before. So uh, I'm just excited to get people together and uh, uh, and see how they like track racing too, you know? Yeah, for sure. Have yeah. you... Uh, so I don't know if I heard it's happening this year, but then I guess there like hasn't been announced yet, but like Bone Machine Crit uh in portland is supposed to come back this year oh i hope so because that's only three hours away from me <laughs> yeah that's what uh, i was thinking so i was like <laughs> if they announce those dates i'm buying my bus ticket yeah oh, I'm, me too. i hope that happens yeah oh that's yeah it'd be cool I'll see you there <laughs> yeah because i have a i have a lot of friends in portland i haven't seen in a while and i have a lot of friends in seattle that i haven't seen in a while so i'm like yeah that's like a perfect opportunity to be able to like podcast see friends race bikes basically like have free place to stay it wouldn't cost yeah. that much <laughs> yeah and portland's really cheap it's a nice small city yeah um i i heard good things about it i think it was last not last year the year before when they had it yeah um i only heard good things so i i guess i haven't been following along but if you hear of anything let me know <laughs> i will i think it'd be sure. cool to go yeah yeah i'm definitely want to yeah i i'm definitely gonna go to that race for sure i was gonna go to mission crit but i just found out that i can't so oh yeah it's just yeah. like an expensive trip slash uh it's like the weekend i'm gonna be out of town in a different for a different uh, commitment mm -hmm. that weekend. <laughs> yeah. 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 Life, life has, yeah, it takes a hold sometimes, but I mean, if you ever do make it out to that race, it is a lot of fun. I got to do that one a couple years ago too. Um, it's, I don't know what makes it so fun. You know what? Like the way that they set that race up, he's got it like in the heart of the mission, which is one of the more, uh, like, uh, foot traffic, neighborhoods there's a lot of uh people that are around and you know he throws it on a I think a saturday night or it wasn't friday i think it was a saturday night um so you know everyone's out and around and there were just so many people that were walking by and uh just being like what is going on right now <laughs> <laughs> why why are these people on are i think brakeless track bikes racing around this corner and uh so that makes it really exciting too um this was a lot of fun when i did it yeah what's the bike community like in seattle i've like it's one of the few places i've never actually like when i've been there i've never actually ridden a bike around so <laughs> oh good for you oh my god we have a lot of hills yeah <laughs> um there are a lot of hills you're you're kind of always ascending or descending in one way or another when you commute or ride around seattle and um uh i get a little i feel like i get a little bit of a workout more or less than uh uh just staying on the flats very hilly it's the city that was built on seven hills um 
the bike messenger community is great. Um, it's very small and uh, homey. Um, there's a huge bike polo community here. This is where bike polo started, I think, like 18 years ago. Um, there's a lot of road riding. And you know what? Like, you can just, you can hop on a road bike and ride east for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so. Uh, maybe a little bit further than that. And you're just engulfed in nature. You know, you can, you find these nice parks to ride around in. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of nature out here, which uh, makes it a lot of fun. Yeah, I think as far and, as like environments go, the Pacific Northwest is my favorite. Like, it's just so beautiful and so green. It is. And like Colorado is beautiful, don't get me wrong. And you can go to the mountains and it's gorgeous and and yeah, lots of trees and stuff. But like, most of Colorado is like desert climate. Like we're a desert mountain climate. So sometimes in the summer, it's just like everything is brown and dead. And, <laughs> and like, there's oh, not, yeah. there's not a lot of trees in the city. So every time I go to like Portland or something, I'm just like, oh, trees everywhere. It's gorgeous. <laughs> green. Everything is green. So yeah. Much. every And especially up here, it just, it does rain a lot. Um, so everything is green or covered in moss <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's so pretty. That's awesome. So what's your favorite music to ride to? Um, that right. has to be, um, that has to be Isis. Do you know the band Isis? No. Um, they're, uh, they're a post metal. I'm so bad with making genres for bands. I'm probably screwing that up, but post metal band from Boston. Uh, so, so no bias there, but, um, <laughs> they were a band for about, Oh God. I have some uh, have hard almost. shorts if that means anything to you. <laughs> <laughs> that you moshed in? <laughs> oh, yeah. They're yeah. like the basketball shorts, you know, and they say Boston hardcore. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Plenty of that. But these guys are a little bit more post metal. Um, uh, God, they're just so amazing. And so I'll listen to them a lot of the time when I'm riding. And actually, uh, I haven't been listening to a lot of music while I ride now. It was definitely a thing for like the last couple years, but um, I'll go out on rides now and I don't really listen to music and I, I, I don't really know why exactly, but it's just actually, it's I think fun for me now to just sort of be in tune with my environment now, as opposed to being distracted by music. For sure. But I, uh, definitely ISIS. <laughs> yeah. I like do the one ear end, you know, so I can still hear things, but like. You know, if I'm riding in the mountains, it's always like calm music, but yeah, or podcasts, honestly. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. Yeah, <laughs> no, me too. I'm obsessed. Obviously, um, I have I have two podcasts. So, <laughs> oh, you have two. That's yeah. cool. You should tell me about your other one. Yeah. Well, the other one is like me and my wife are both vegan. So we have one where we nerd out about vegan food. Oh, what? That's amazing. Yeah. All right. I'm going to tell Fred about that. Yeah. I, um, I've been vegetarian for years and years and years, but I just went vegan January 1st this year. Nice. So. <laughs> that's rad. There's a, um, yeah, that's one of the other reasons why I want to go to Seattle soon is cause like a lot of my friends that live there are people that I knew from the vegan community. And, uh, cause I used to own a vegan grocery store and, uh, I used to have like a, anyway, whatever. Yeah. But basically that's how I know a lot of people, like all my friends in Portland and stuff, like they either own vegan grocery stores or clothing companies or restaurants or whatever. And, uh, I haven't been to Seattle since I've been vegan and like, I want to go to Mighty O Donuts. I want to go to, uh, yeah. I want to go to Wayward. I want to go to yep. Pizza Pie, like all those places. So, yeah, actually, um, there there's not a lot of vegan options, but the vegan options out here, like restaurants and things like that, are, are they are really good. Uh, Fred and I, well, my boyfriend and I, just went to this place called No Bones Beach, I think it is. Yeah, No Bones Beach, up in uh, Ballard, and it's this like tiki restaurant slash bar, and the food is a, it's a little bit on the pricier side, but it was some of the the best that I've ever had for as far as like uh, vegan food goes in restaurants. Oh God, it's so good. I'll have to take you there if you come out here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
I definitely will. I got to go visit my friend Hans and a bunch of other friends. <laughs> nice. So, nice. Yeah, definitely. I'll want to go ride with some people and go eat some good food. So for sure. Yeah. Um, so being a bike messenger, we never got into like how you got into being a bike messenger. So let's start out with that. So yeah. How did you, okay. be, how did you get into being a bike messenger? Um, I think it was just like, it wasn't like a super cool story or anything, but I was just friends with people that were bike messengers. And so I saw what they were doing and how they had worked and things like that. And, and I, I was like, oh, well, I already ride a bike, I guess. Uh, and I hate my office job, so I'm just going to quit and be a bike messenger <laughs> and, uh, you know, forego all that great health insurance. But, uh, it's, it's definitely been one of the better decisions. Um, it is a really fun job. It can be really shitty at times, Yeah, like but, job. um, I guess, um, <laughs> you just have to wear more wool layers. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, I kind of just fell into it because I think of the, the group of friends that I was in exposed to it, I guess. Yeah. I don't know how the messengers in like Minneapolis do it, but they do it. Oh my God. <laughs> it's too fucking I, cold. I don't know. Why do you people live there? I love Minneapolis. It's, I love that city f- so much. Yeah. But I just went to Super Bowl this year, which mm-hmm. was, uh, I think like a month ago now. And like the day or sorry, the day after we landed, it was like the wind chill was like negative 16. And I grew up in Boston. Like we never experienced cold like that, or I never experienced cold like that. And Oh God, it's just so painful. (laughs) Oh yeah. I spent the first like half of my life. Well, not half now, less than half now, but I spent the first part of my like childhood and everything in Texas. And then we moved to Colorado when I was 14 and it's not that, Yeah, it's not that cold here, but it's really cold, and I couldn't imagine living somewhere where it was colder. (laughs) Yeah, God, they uh, you got to give it up to those Minneapolis bike messengers, man. You really do. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess you get used to it. Like you learn how to layer, you learn how to protect yourself against the cold and the snow and things like that. So you know, I guess it's you know, you acclimate it you know to the environment that you're in. So, but but still, you got to give it up to them. (laughs) Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. So I have to ask the question. This is like really controversial and really important question, but. Oh my God. Premium Rush or Quicksilver? (laughs) Oh my God. I hate you. (laughs) I thought you were going to like pull something out of uh, the internet drama webs. Oh yeah. I don't Um, know anything about the internet drama, so. Oh, me neither. I try to just stay away. Oh yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> uh, hold my food log. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I have to go with Premium Rush because uh, I'm sorry, but I have never seen Quicksilver. <laughs> uh, I guess I have to now that you just mentioned it. Um, you know, it's a good watch. But, <laughs> uh, but uh, no, Premium Rush was uh, a. F- it was ridiculous and cheesy. Of course. But I thought I thought it was kind of cool to like watch that movie and I got to see some folks that I knew from New York and so the you know the the producers or whoever they gave some cameos to some OG, you know, uh legends out there, uh bike messenger legends and things like that. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. I'm like, "Oh yeah, I know that one person." Right? I didn't know who any of those people were like back in the day and then I rewatched that movie recently and I was like, "Hey, that's Kim nonstop." <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, some other people um, that I recognize, but I'm bad with names, so. Yeah, or, uh, well, uh, what's his face? The, the uh, uh, Joseph Gordon Lovett. Yeah. He had two stunt doubles, so he had Austin for the street riding. And yep. then, did you know he had Danny, um, the freestyle cyclist from Ireland? What's his name? Danny Mackay? Danny, Danny McCoy, I think it is. Oh. Uh for the scenes when he's jumping on his bike, like on the cop cars in that warehouse oh, yeah, yeah. and he's trying to escape. Yeah. Which is like a ridiculous scene. Of him, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's like, wait, Austin horse can do that stuff too. But, oh. um, yeah, he had another freestyle guy, uh, doing his stunts and that, that was really cool to see too. That's awesome. Man. 
that movie is just so ridiculous. Why do you have to bring it up? <laughs> it is ridiculous, but it's it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it Wait is. Wait till you watch is. Quicksilver. It's really fun to be like, oh, look, he has a freewheel. Oh, look, he's back on a fixed gear. Look, he has a freewheel again. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen that TV show? I think it's called Double Rush or Triple Rush. No. Have you seen that one? No. Okay, so, so, this, so I have homework. I'll look up Quicksilver. You look up uh, Double Rush. It was like a 90s uh, drama TV show uh, that was based on bike messengers, and it only lasted like one season. All right, I'm, I'm looking it up now. <laughs> I can hear you looking it up. It's, either, it's, it's called Double Rush or Triple Rush, I think. Double Rush, maybe. Yep, there it is. Oh, my God. Yeah. It, what year did it come out? 1995. Yeah. <laughs> so I was 10 uh, years old. Yeah, it only old. <laughs> lasted one season. Yeah. That's amazing. I was... Uh, oh, my God. They have... Yeah. Looks, it did. looks like they have full episodes on YouTube. Doing oh, it. yeah. Go watch them. <laughs> Doing it. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know if there's a good way to make a bike movie. Unless it's... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You know... Because <laughs> even, like, the road bike movies, like, American Flyers or something, or, like... <laughs> it's hard. I don't, I don't know. I, yeah, I wouldn't know how you would make it any better than what they are already doing. I mean, cause you know, you'll see movies of other, uh, sports disciplines or other job, job occupation. Uh, oh my God. Job occupations. Um, like there's that new firefighter movie that just came out where the, the guys are, uh, uh, putting out the fires. God, I'm blanking right now on the <laughs> name of it. But, you know, I'm sure that there's firefighters that are sitting back watching this movie that are like, you know, you know, he wouldn't have been able to do that stunt or this and this and that. So it's yeah. all it's all entertainment anyway. So. Oh, for sure. It's like when uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's like text, like twit, like tweeting about like science and movies or something like, oh, that wouldn't make that sound. And you're like, OK, well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. But, you know, there's, like, at least a lot of cool, like, videos people can just watch that are probably more exciting anyway. Like, Line of Sight or something. <laughs> or anything MASH does is just rad. Did you see the one where he's going down California Street? Yep. Is it California Street or California Ave? But, um, yeah, he's bombing down California. And I remember... Somebody tried to tell me that his pedal broke oh, no. in between him doing that. And so that was the first time that I'd seen a MASH video because I think it, like a couple of folks and I were like at the TCB office and they were like, oh, did you see the new thing, the new MASH video? His pedal broke. This is crazy. And so that was my, I guess that was my first MASH video that I ever watched. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first one I ever saw was like they were out riding with like Lance Armstrong in Austin. <laughs> It was that in San Francisco. No, it, they went to Austin for a trip, and they ended up riding with Lance Armstrong, and it's oh, insane. Oh, oh! And then Lance oh, like cool. drops them and starts going so fast on this fixed gear bike, and you're like, "Well, he was probably the only one on EPO." So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what a guy, huh? <laughs> There's oh, actually yeah. a really good documentary about him on Netflix. Have you seen that one? I forget the name of it. Yeah, but it. It, yeah, have you seen it? It's mm -hmm. pretty good. <laughs> I have a funny story about that. So I was at the dentist and the lady is like working on my teeth. And I was like, before she started like doing stuff to my teeth or whatever, she was like, oh, so what do you do? And I was like, oh, I have a podcast and I work for a coffee company and like all this stuff. And and then she was like, oh, what's your podcast? I love podcasts. And I was like, well, I have this track bike <laughs> podcast. And she's like, oh, my... Uh, my father-in-law just made a documentary a few years ago about Lance Armstrong. And it was that movie that's on Netflix. Alex Gibney was no like, no yeah. way. <laughs> and I was like, well, tell him I'm a huge fan of his movies. Cause he makes a lot of, <laughs> he makes a lot of documentaries and I'm a filmmaker too. So I like nerd out about all that stuff, but yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, he did a really good job with it. You know, he didn't, yeah, he didn't portray Lance in a good light at all, really, and he just told the truth. Yeah, which is which was what I thought was great about that documentary. Yeah, for sure. He also did uh, the Scientology movie that HBO put out, which was pretty good too. Oh, cool! Yeah, I haven't seen that one. He's good at doing that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Uh. Well, that's all I had written down. So. Oh, cool. 
uh, uh do you have well, any last shout outs like people you want to shout out sponsors all that kind of stuff last parting um, words <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Um, how many times I'll just say all city again. I've said it like a thousand times already, but, (laughs) (laughs) um, but those guys are my family. It's so cool to be, be a part of them, part with them. Uh, and then I don't know, probably shout out to my cat Binks. who's probably outside hunting for some birds right now. And I got to go get him. (laughs) (laughs) He's a monster. (laughs) Yeah. And where can people find you on social media or the team that you're starting and all that oh yeah um find me on instagram uh heather from boston is my personal page um and i'll post anything up there um i'm also on facebook um if anyone's curious in my artwork i also i come from a tattoo painting background um aside from racing track bikes uh, that Instagram account is notes to epiphany. And yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> that's awesome. What? It, so yeah. tell me about your artwork a little bit. I don't know anything about that. Oh, well, I, so I uh, thought I was going to be a tattooer one day. Maybe, I don't know. I should still work on it. Of course, I keep telling myself, but I apprenticed for a little while. I got to tattoo for a little while. This was a couple years ago. Um, and so, uh, the tattooing thing didn't really work out. Um, so I just kept painting. Uh, so now I do, uh, like traditional tattoo paintings. Uh, they're a little bit inspired by that artwork, uh, and an ode to all the, the older generation tattooers out there that I admire. Um, yeah, like the, the last apprenticeship I had, it was great and I learned a lot. But um, they were a little sexist. It just got really weird. Like they, they didn't allow me to date anyone or to hang out what? with my friends during my apprenticeship. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, weird. it wasn't like, it wasn't like they had handcuffed me to the tattoo shop. But it was, it was highly encouraged to not date anyone or to really like go hang out and party. So if anyone was, if anyone knew me when I was doing this apprenticeship, I was just not around. (laughs) So it was really, it just sucked, I guess. And so after that, I told myself that, you know, I'd stick to my roots that I, which are, are that I love the art. And I just, I, I, you know, I have tattoos myself. um, And if maybe if I can't find a position in a tattoo shop, then I can still paint. And I could still sell my paintings to people that are interested. So I've just kind of, I've just kind of done that the last few years. Got to have some artwork on a kit or something. I'll buy one. (laughs) Oh, that would be, that would be exciting. I don't even know. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't even know how to do that, but hey. All right, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Save the Track Bike. I couldn't do this without you guys. So if you have some time, please go leave me a five-star rating on iTunes. I know every podcast says that, and you know it genuinely helps us. So, yeah. Um, Thank you to FixGearCrit.com. Thank you to O'Wheelie Bike Shop. And thank you to Deluxe Cycles for sending me those amazing titanium handlebars that me and Chaz nerded out about in his episode. And yeah, there's a lot of really exciting things happening. So make sure you're following us on Instagram at Save the Track Bike, SaveTheTrackBike.com. The music is from Vitamin Pets via Free Music Archive. And this is produced by David Draper. Now go ride your bike, whatever bike, wherever.